music videos. Remember those? Those antiquated promotional tools made solely to sell you records? At one point they were such a big deal, there were not one, but two cable channels entirely devoted to them. Eh, one time I was an audience member on the set of TRL. Oh, Carson Daly smelled so good. Of course, music videos still exist, but they just don't hold the level of sway and power and influence they once did in the world of pop culture. Just like professional wrestling, this week we're looking at a mostly exhaustive list of music videos featuring wrestlers. You can't talk about music videos as we know them today without one of the early icons of MTV, Cyndi Lauper. Her breakout song from 1983, Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, dominated charts around the world and won the first ever Best Female Video Moon Man at the inaugural MTV Video Music Awards. Though the video is a classic in and of itself, wrestling fans often point to the appearance of Captain Lou Albano as one of its best parts. He was only on screen for a whopping 17 seconds, but the impact was long-lasting, as the friendship forged by Albano and Lauper's manager David Wolf helped forge the rock and wrestling connection that gave the World Wrestling Federation some serious credibility. Albana would also appear in the video for Shebop, Lopper's Ode to Masturbation. What? It's true! But Cindy's partnership with the WWF wasn't over just yet. In 1985, The Goonies came out to much fanfare, and Lopper's contribution to the film's soundtrack was the song The Goonies Are Good Enough. Why the abbreviated R? Seems unnecessary. In the video, Cindy's parents, played once again by Captain Lou and Cindy's actual mother, own a gas station that's being shut down and are in debt to a group of evil creditors, played by Freddie Blassie, Roddy Piper, and the Iron Sheik. Lovely peasants! Nice to see Mr. Blassie! Nice to see the peasants! Listen, lady, this is my property. No! And in case you couldn't tell the good guys from the bad in this story, everyone in the video is wearing a button on their shirt that has either a smiley face or a frowny face. Huh, to this day, we're still feeling the effects of the Face Heel Registration Act of 1984. From there, the video takes the plot of the Goonies and puts it through the cartoon matic The villains cackle with glee as they try to evict Cindy's family, and they start a shouting match with Captain Lou, and the fabulous Moolah comes driving a truck with Nikolai Volkov in the back milking a fake cow. You know, just like how the movie went. <laughs> Slap that insanity in the middle of the White Album, people will call it genius. As the wrestlers are arguing, Cindy pulls back an old picture of Captain Lou's pirate ancestor to reveal a hidden cave. Thanks to that clarification text on the screen. Cindy finds a treasure map, then the actual Goonies materialize. After a montage of movie footage, a gang of pirates, played by the Heels, and a sea witch, played by Lopper's mother, attack the heroes. Cindy is eventually cornered by the baddies. <laughs> nice breaking of the fourth wall there, but come on, there's no way you can get Spielberg to show up in this. Well, the first thing you sh I don't know. What is this video? What will become of poor Cindy now? Don't miss part two. Coming soon to a TV near you. Yes, they made not one, but two music videos for this single song. <laughs> Gotta love that Spielberg money. After the cliffhanger ending of part one, part two opens up on a pirate ship as Cindy and the Goonies are forced into nondescript manual labor. So if the giant octopus is descending into the water as this blatantly rewound video shows, how does she still get wrapped up in one of its tentacles? The Goonies and Cindy's friends break out of their bondage completely on their own. Since I assume they were able to do this the entire time, I'm not sure if they or the villains look dumber here. After taking out the sea witch, they find the treasure and use it to distract the pirates as they make their escape and... Wait, what are the Goonies wearing around their ankles? Are they turning into Muppets? Our heroes return to the surface and show off the treasure to the creditors, but unlike the Goonies, those jewels aren't good enough. That's when Cindy brings in some backup. Uh, Andre? Um, what's with the loincloth? The video ends with Andre chasing off the heels as the Lopper Albano family celebrates. Well, hang on. Anyone else notice the Goonies didn't leave the cave with Lopper and her friends? Those monsters left the kids in there to die! In all seriousness, these two music videos are a blast. There's the campy acting, the slapstick, the sets, the catchy song, and the actress from the movie appearing was the icing on the cake. This looked as fun to produce as it was to watch. The video, or rather the two videos, are about as great a commercial for a movie as you can possibly get. The one knock I have on this song is it can get awfully repetitive. Not nearly as bad as the 8-bit version for the NES game, but it can still be grating. Just focus on the visuals and you'll be fine. The Goonies, Cyndi Lauper, and Pro Wrestling. The biggest concentration of the 80s you'll ever see. The only thing missing here is a threat of nuclear war. Man, look at all those names in the video. Piper, Iron Sheik, Moolah, Andre the Giant. This is like a live-action version of Hulk Hogan's cartoon. Speaking of which, it's kind of odd that Hogan wasn't in this video himself. But just a couple of years later, he'd finally get a crack at Hollywood. Or I should say, 
Dollywood. Headlock on My Heart was a video made especially for Dolly Parton's variety show back in 1987 on ABC. According to Dolly, the song was inspired by a gossip magazine that predicted she'd marry a 300-pound wrestler, write a song about him, and feature him in the music video. The video, which stars a 300-pound wrestler, shows Dolly falling in love with him and marrying him. Okay, well, you know, sometimes these things write themselves. His name was Starlight Starbright, the greatest in the land. When I think of the name Starlight Starbright, the absolute last wrestler I would think of having that name is Hulk Hogan. I'm wearing on the bling bling. What makes it even better is even though Hogan's supposedly playing a different character, he's still wearing his red and yellow getup. He showed more color range and no holds barred. If you're going to be called Starlight Starbright, dazzle that shit up or something. Okay, look, I can buy the idea that some women find Hulk Hogan attractive, maybe even beautiful, but I'll be damned if someone calls him 300 pounds of magic. <laughs> Dolly is absolutely enthralled with Starlight, as all women were wont to do at the time, I'll take their word for it. Here we see the big man put a hurtin' on Mike Sharp. Rumor has it they really had to crank up the audience noise to drown out all that grunting. <laughs> As the Brightster pins Iron Mike, his eyes lock with Parton's. He immediately leaves the ring, picks her up, and takes her to the back to do God only knows what. Within moments, Sharp's unconscious body is taken away, and the ring's decked out for a wedding, because we all know that in-ring weddings are guaranteed to last. In this ring, I be wing. Seriously, if I could go back in time, I would totally wear that tux to my own wedding. So after what was, at the absolute maximum, a few hours together, Dolly and Starbright get married. If this really happened, this could have immensely improved the quality of Hulk's album. I'll take Dolly Parton singing over Linda Hogan any day. Now, it may shock you, but this is not the first time pro wrestling and country music have crossed paths. Take, for example, Ray Stevens, the singer, not the wrestler. In 1985, Stevens released a two-part ballad about a wrestler named the Blue Cyclone, but the music videos for them didn't come out until the year 2000, which explains how this China poster managed to appear. At first, I just thought Stevens was a Time Lord. The Cyclone put the vulture in an airplane spin, then he body slammed him and he did it again! I swear I didn't see how that old boy could take much more. Though there aren't actually any big time wrestlers in the videos, I still think they're worth including here since wrestling's a huge part of the story. I enjoy the comedy and I think they really capture the feel of a small town wrestling show, right on down to the old lady in the front row who threatens to beat up the heels. She's a stunt granny. Meet Barry Poole, better known as Cletus T. Judd, who's famous for his parodies of country music songs. He's based Basically the country version of Weird Al Yankovic, which I had no idea was a thing until now. In 1996, he released the song Skull, the Grundy County Spitting Incident, one of his two parodies of a single John Michael Montgomery song. And I said, hush your mouth, nobody's gonna mind if I pack my lip and ignore the sign, cause a little bit of skull never hurt no one at all. Skull tells the story of a guy who went to a live auction and ignored the signs saying not to dip. He wound up spitting on people and getting in trouble for it. And if that description isn't gross enough, their depiction of tobacco spit in this music video is more like the green slime you'd see on You Can't Do That on Television. The video features the Godwins and Hillbilly Jim as Cletus's friends. And if you don't blink, you'll even see Jesse James pre-road dog days. The video ends with everyone throwing the slime at each other. Which in case you forgot is supposed to be the tobacco spit! That was so much fun! Let's do it again! Not! 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 Yay for pointless repetition! Pointless repetition! Pointless repetition! For our last country number, we're jumping way ahead to the year 2011 with Sarah Darling and her song, Something to Do With Your Hands. The video shows Sarah intentionally unscrewing light bulbs and doing other stuff in order to summon the repairman, who's played by none other than AJ Styles. He's only about 33 years old in this video, but compared to how he looks now, he might as well be 23. The video makes it seem like Sarah and Styles have nothing more than a repairman-customer relationship, but the song lyrics imply she's singing to her boyfriend or husband. So it's either a common case of the video and the lyrics not totally matching up, or maybe she's having a secret affair with Styles. Maybe this is her thing. Maybe she has a kink for handyman. Woohoo, you naughty she devil you. And if you need something to do with your hands, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, 
You know, when it comes to euphemisms for sex, that one's gotta be the worst. Worst. This shot is my favorite because even though I can tell he just fixed the TV, it looks like he just really pleased with what he's packing. Also, there's this shot throughout the video of Darling singing while lying on the floor, but we discover it's the aftermath of something much later in the video. How long was she down there singing before Styles picked her up? One thing's for sure, that place is now the home that AJ Styles fixed! Or broke. Again, this video is kind of confusing that way. Now this one's not a music video in the traditional sense, it's more of a cutaway gag, but it's a scene with a wrestler in it, set to music, so it's going in this video, damn it! Going back in time a bit, this insane footage of the Ultimate Warrior dancing with Phil Collins, the song Two Hearts, is taken from a rare TV special called Seriously, Phil Collins. True story, those are my exact words when I first saw this clip. Seriously? Phil Collins? The special, which aired only one time on CBS in 1990, is punctuated with a series of skits with Gilbert Gottfried, Vanessa Williams, and Eddie Gordetsky as TV executives trying to figure out what to include in the TV special they're currently featured in. So meta. And then we get, like, Miss America. Vanessa Williams? Nah, she'd never do it. I didn't think so. Point. It's funny because she's actually right there. I got it! Phil Collins versus the Ultimate Warrior. Hey, Iago, please don't give Vince any ideas. We then cut to a ring where Collins is wearing his best pajamas and skull cap, two-stepping with a WWF champion. Still not as bizarre as the dingo warrior in those car commercials. After a little bit of dancing, the warrior snaps out of it and proceeds to whip the shit out of Phil Collins. I really admire the dedication by both men in this video. For as silly as it is, the warrior doesn't show any signs of checking out and puts his full character into it. As for Collins, look at him. He's getting his ass kicked, yet he doesn't stop singing. And say what you want, he lasted a lot longer against the warrior than Triple H. You dare blast him against the all-powerful steel beating heart of the warrior! Oh no! Oh god! Oh god, no, please! Please, no, no, no! Please! Uh, Stevie Richards! What am I gonna do? Oh no, god, no! Well, the first thing you need to do is. Hmm. I don't know. Please, please, don't do this. No, please, no. What will become of poor Brian now? Don't miss part two, coming soon to a YouTube channel near you.